Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to the Iron Reaver on Mythic. Now this encounter, just like Hellfire Assault, is very similar to its heroic version. Phase 1 is almost exactly the same, but there are a few key changes to the bombs in Phase 2. Now for your first kill, you probably want to bring two tanks, five healers, and almost any DPS composition you like. Just don't be too melee heavy, as they're not all that great in Phase 2, unless you get extremely lucky with bomb spawn. Now before we talk about Phase 2, let's go over Phase 1 briefly. Now, like in Heroic, you want your raid to be spread 8 yards to keep the unstable orb stacks as low as possible. But of course, make sure you're in range of at least one healer the whole time. The only noticeable difference in this phase is that you'll get sets of fire bombs to deal with on a timer. These bombs will explode after 25 seconds, dealing large amount of damage to the raid, as well as making your raid take even more damage from subsequent bombs. Now these bombs have very little health, just have everyone swap to them and they'll disappear before they explode. And if you don't kill them in time, you're pretty much guaranteed a wipe. Barrage will still come in, just make sure you react quickly and move out of the way of whatever direction the Reaver is facing. And once again, make sure you aren't too far away from the boss because otherwise it's hard to move from it. The Iron Reaver will sh still shoot out artillery shells at your tanks and these do significantly more damage on Mythic and can land at very awkward overlap points with certain abilities. It's very important that you minimize the damage that your raid takes by moving as far away as you possibly can with them. But don't move too far away, otherwise you won't be back in time to taunt. If you're struggling with this and people in your raid are randomly dying from being too close, consider using maybe warlock gates or movement speed rotations from druids or monks or even priest feathers just to make it so you can move further away so people don't die. Ultimately, if you're mega struggling, which you really shouldn't be, you can use three tanks. Now the boss will still do pounding and you'll have three in total per phase one. Now you want to set up healing cooldowns for every single pounding. However, save your most strongest healing cooldowns for the third one. On the third pounding, you'll receive an artillery hit on your raid almost immediately before the cast starts. This can easily combo people if there are no cooldowns up. So just use your AMs, your personal CDs uh, on the third one with a strong healing CD output like Revival or Tranquility or whatever you've got just to make sure that no one gets completely annihilated by that crossover point. Now, if people keep their unstable orb stacks really low by staying eight yards apart and, you know, they don't get too many fire stacks, you can easily heal pounding one and two without any healing cooldowns whatsoever. So you might want to keep that in mind. If people play properly, you don't even need to use a cooldown at all. And of course, lastly, in this phase, you will still have the Blitz. It works the exact same way. Just try your best to avoid it. If you are hit by it, you will likely be outside a healer range and it does deal a nasty amount of damage on Mythics. Just avoid the charge, otherwise you're probably going to die. Now, after the boss has reached full energy, she will go up into the air and you'll now enter phase two. Now, in this phase, the boss, like in Heroic, takes far less damage to totally ignore her and you'll have to deal with the next incoming mechanic. She'll still place artillery on three random players. Make sure you move out as far as you possibly can just to minimize the amount of damage that's going on the raid. And if you have a chance to pre-shield or pre-hot these players, it's quite a good idea because when they do move out, they're not going to be receiving any other healing otherwise. Now in Mythic, instead of one type of bomb spawning, you'll now have four. Now these bombs spawn all over the place, but they usually spawn near the fuel line which they came in with. Now because of this, you'll want your DPS to be spread to cover certain areas of the room and as a result you'll also need to spread your healers so you'll probably want to assign which dps and which healers are covering what area before you even pull the boss also remember with these fuel lines that you do need to move out before they're ignited on mythic the flash fire will definitely one shot you so the quick fuse bombs they need to die first these bombs will detonate after 12 seconds and as a result all dps must swap to them immediately but they have like literally next to no health hunters can like one shot them pretty yeah. easily so just make sure you swap to them, make sure you kill them before they explode. Now, burning bombs will explode after 40 seconds. However, when you attack them, you'll take a fire damage taken debuff that lasts for six seconds. And this will just stack up and up and up every time you deal damage to it. You need to make sure that you monitor your stacks because if you attack these bombs six seconds before an artillery lands, you're going to need to use a personal cooldown or immunity if your stacks are, say, five or higher because the artillery does fire damage, you have a fire damage taken increase, you're going to fucking die if you get too many stacks. So yeah, make sure you're immune or make sure you do not attack before the artillery lands. Reactive bombs are for your tanks and these will explode after 30 seconds. However, you don't need to do any damage to them. You can destroy them simply by jumping on them, just like the bombs on the Iron Juggernaut encounter in Siege Vogrima. When you jump on these bombs, they will do quite a lot of damage to you. So if you can have some form of damage reduction up, that will help you out a lot. And the last bombs you'll see are reinforced bombs and these will explode after 90 seconds. The way that you deal with these bombs is that if there's no quick fuse bombs up or there's no burning bombs up, 
DPS want to switch to these instead. They have significantly more health than the other bombs, but of course they also take way longer to explode. What you may also want to do with these bombs is just make it so the melee kill them, so the range can deal with the quick fuse and the burning bombs. But if you do decide to use this strategy, make sure your melee still swap to any bombs that are nearby, like quick fuse ones as an example, just so they don't explode. So this phase really is just about finding a balance with your DPS and of course having awareness making sure you know exactly where the bombs have spawned so you can swap to them quickly. But providing you swap to them quickly, they don't have too much health and you do have quite a lot of time to kill them before any of them explode. After dealing with the three waves, the boss will finish the phase with the falling slam just like on Heroic. Of course, make sure you're not in the targeting circle, you will almost certainly die. And watch out for any fire patches that are between yourself and the boss as they will be thrown back towards you. So on the basis that no one died in phase one and no one died in phase two, when you go back into phase one, it's very unlikely that you will then go back into phase two. The boss will probably end up dying at this point. Yeah, it's most likely. However, the thing is, people will probably die. I yeah. always die to the first barrage because I'm a good player. So <laughs> that normally means that um, we, you normally will go back into phase two. And even if that does happen, it doesn't matter. Just clear it out all again. This boss isn't a DPS check at all. Yeah. It's just, well, apart from just making sure the bombs don't explode. And generally, most of the bombs can be dealt with as long as you are just keeping up on top of it and you don't miss any. Because one random bomb on the side, you just always got to keep your eye out for that one because that's the one that's going to wipe your raid. Either way, thank you very much for watching, guys. If this guide did help you out, then make sure you leave us a like. It helps us out a lot. And of course, we'll see you in the next guide. Thanks for watching. Thank you.